Good morning. Thank you for joining me. I am Pastor Sean, and today is Monday, May 18th, and this is your daily morning prayer. So, let us begin. Oh Lord, open my lips. Oh, let me bring this over so I can see it better. Okay, there we go. Oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. O come, let us worship him. Our psalm for today is one, uh, 103. Psalm 103, verses 6 through 14. See, the Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses. He acts to the people of the, to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. All right, and our text for today, good one, is, a, is from Luke 15, verses 11 through 32. This is the uh, parable of the prodigal son, or the parable of the poorly named parable. <laughs> Jesus said, There was a man who had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country, so he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion, and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring the fattened calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fattened calf, because he has received him back safe and sound. But he was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him, but he answered his father, Look, these many years I have served you, and have never disobeyed your command. Yet you never gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fattened calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to, be ce to celebrate and be glad, for this your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. In many and various ways God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in these last days, he's spoken to us by his son. All right, so very well-known parable. Um, 
most most everybody knows this one. And the reason why I say it's it's the unfortunate or unfortunately named parable, improperly named, is that uh, it's the the focus isn't so much the son but the father. I mean that's that's the main main focus here. That the father is the one who uh, restores his son. Um, brings him back into the family, runs after him, and has compassion and all that. So um, it's, it's really more about the the reckless love of the father, I guess. So the, the thing is all predicated by this one son who um, asked for his share of his, of his inheritance. Now, the, the big deal there is that his father is obviously still alive. So basically, this isn't just, hey, can I have my share of the stuff? I mean, it's a pretty bold, strong thing. He's saying, "Look, look, look, Dad. I don't, I don't care that you're alive. Just, you know, I, I almost wish you were dead, so that way I could have my stuff and I could just go do my own thing." So he really cuts himself off from from the family, and he goes off, and you know, we follow his adventures there. The one thing that is kind of lost in this is um, that I, I personally find kind of interesting is that you know he just says, "Give me the property." You know, I, I want my half, and he does. We, we don't have any part of the, it, Jesus doesn't tell us, you know, uh, an angle of the story of what the father said or did, if he was angry or what. Um, we can we can guess based on the father's uh, reaction later in the story that you know, he's probably hurt, but uh, he loves his son. Even, even when his son rejects him and goes off, he still loves his son and, and says, well, here, all that I have is yours, um, which is kind of, it's a nice thing and, and kind of a scary thing too, because when it comes to us and our sin with God, that he still loves us. Even when we sin, even when we reject him, he loves us and he still gives us all that he has. You know, he doesn't um, see us doing doing all of our horrible things and say, well, I'm going to, I'm going to take this away and take that away. I mean, when we lose things that that are important to us, it's usually it's it's our fault. <laughs> but um, the, the, why I say it's kind of scary is that he 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 lets us do it, and that's kind of Paul will talk about this. How you know, oftentimes when we are defiant against God and we s insist on sinning and we say that this is how I want to do it, this is how I'm going to live my life, God will oftentimes say, okay, he'll he'll. He'll let us have what we want. Uh, and oftentimes that is for him to step aside so that we can be our own God. Um, so that's why it's, it's sometimes scary that, that uh, you know, God will sometimes give us exactly what we want and what we demand. And uh, that's not always, it's rarely a good thing. Um, another aspect of this is that he's a, you know, the idea here is that it's it's a Jewish audience, so the assumption is that this is a, a Jewish family. So when the son goes off, uh, he finds the only work he can find after he squandered everything is to be feeding pigs. Now, of course, pigs are unclean animals, so you, you didn't want to have anything to do with them. So touching them, you know, being having to tend to them would make you unclean. And so not only is he dealing with unclean animals, and he has made himself unclean, but he is looking at their food and thinking like, oof, well, that would, that would work. <laughs> I wish I could have that to eat. So the, you know, if you think about the way this hits the, the hearers that Jesus is, is in front of, um, it's, it's horrible. It's like, oh my gosh, not only has he debased himself by squandering the goods of his father, and then, you know, with, with prostitutes and whatever else. But he has now ended up dealing with unclean animals and even wanting to eat their slop. <laughs> so it's, it, it's, it's truly, you know, it, it hits them and it's just, it's, it's desperate, it's disgusting. It's like, oh my gosh, this guy is fallen so far and he is just the worst of the worst now. So then he comes back, um, just wants to be like a servant. He, he, he knows he understands what he's done, um, knows that he's not worthy to be a son anymore, that he has uh, forsaken his his uh, birthright. 
and then the father has compassion. And I, I forgot to look this up. I'm pretty sure the Greek word behind uh, compassion here is the same kind of gut-wrenching compassion that Jesus often has when he sees people in uh, who are suffering. So, you know, we see the, the father who, who sees his son from far off and goes running off to, to greet him, to, to embrace him, to kiss him. And, and again, the, the, the image of the son that the hearers have is that he's, he's disgusting. He's unclean. He, he is foul in every sense of the word. I mean, this is like somebody you wouldn't want to touch with a 10 foot pole. Uh, you wouldn't want in your house, just looking at him. You're like, Ooh, Oh God, get away. So this is the, the son who comes up and the father who has been rejected, who has been, um, mistreated really. He runs to him and grabs him and embraces him and kisses him and, uh, and restores him. So that's, that's this wonderful image that we get of, of who we are and who God is, that we are this disgusting degenerate who is worth nothing, who has had everything and willingly threw it all away, squandered it. And uh, we come back disgusting, <laughs> those same disgusting selves with nothing to offer. And God comes and, and well, he, he runs to us. You know, we don't come to him. We, we, he runs to us and restores us, makes us sons and daughters again. So beautiful kind of thing going on here. And then uh, the, the prologue of the story is that the older son, now in, in the context of Jesus telling the story, the older son would represent like the Pharisees and all these you know, the groups that have been against him, who have seen him, seen Jesus eat with tax collectors and sinners and deal with all the unclean people and degenerates and whatnot. And they're thoroughly disgusted by it. So now they represent the older brother who, who comes and he is upset with God or the father in this case and says look, look you know i've i've always done what you said i've followed your commands and i've never asked for anything um and he says well, you are always with me and, and all that i have is yours but you know hey this is to celebrate and be glad this your brother he was dead now he's alive he's lost and is found he's come back he's returned to where he should be um and so you know, this is definitely a, a shot across the bow of the Pharisees who are thoroughly put out when they see Jesus ministering to what they consider the, the lesser parts of society, the, the undeserving ones. And he's like saying, you've forgotten who these people are to you. You have lost all sense of that. Um, this, is, this is your brother. This is your sister. How can you just you know, write them off and, and just be jealous because you never got something that, that you've always had, <laughs> you know, so he's throwing a party with a fattened calf. Well, he says, all that I have is, is yours. It's yours too. <laughs> um, so it's, it's definitely the first part is, is a great encouragement for us. And then the last part is, uh, a reminder, I mean, I don't want to say a warning so much because nothing happens. There's no judgment in this parable, but it's definitely a reminder, kind of a prodding reminder to say like, and just as you, you find yourself as the sun in this passage, also remember that those around you are in the same boat. So do not look down on them. Do not uh, forget that they are your brothers and sisters um, and that uh, we should be celebrating with them when they uh, repent and, and are brought back into the family. So great, great, great text. Um, like I said, it usually focuses on the, the son, the prodigal son, that's what it's called, or that's what we have called it. But it's it's really more about the, the, the love of the father, that he is the one who searches. And, and if you expand the context, this is part of three parables of lost things. So Jesus tells a parable of the, of the lost sheep and the lost coin and the lost son. And the the focal point in, in all these stories are not the lost thing, but the one who searches after and finds the lost thing. So it's not all about the sheep that goes lost. It's about the shepherd who who leaves the flock, the 99, to, to search for the one that is lost and bring him back. It is not about the coin that is lost. It is about the woman who who turns her house upside down 
and searches and finds the coin and calls everyone to celebrate. So truly, it, it is about the one who, who seek, seeks out and uh, finds us. So great, 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 great stuff. Uh, what else do I want to say about that? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's that's probably good for right now. So, let us pray. Oh, let me find our prayer for today. Okay. Now let us pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, you stood afar off, waiting to see your prodigals appear at the gate. Then running to us, you overwhelmed us with grace and invited us to sit at table, to rejoice at our home homecoming, Help us to repent of our sins and strip us of every thought that we might merit your salvation. Then bring us home to be with you at the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty, merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Well, blessings to you on the beginning of this week. Uh, I hope that uh, today is, is a wonderful day um, and, and uh, one that you can go back to this this special text and remember that um, you have a God who, who runs out to greet you, to, to take you in his arms, to welcome you back, uh, to restore you, that, uh, you know, there, there's no, there's nothing that you, you have said or done that is too great for him to forgive, to absolve, and to set aside, you know, as far as the east is from the west, so far all of your sins removed from you so that, that he runs to, to, to gather you up in his arms. Uh, it's, it's, it's a wonderful, loving, merciful, graceful God that we have. Grace-filled. I say graceful. Like he's graceful. Well, I guess he is that too, but grace-filled. Sounds more better. Um, but just, it's a wonderful text to celebrate and, and be comforted. So I, I hope that is uh, how, how your day goes. All right. Peace be with you.